So today we're doing a, a bit of a different thing. We're going to do some podcast stuff. We're having a conversation with my buddy. And I mean, you've met him before, Malcolm Pugh. I would say after this, I'm more his buddy. You're more his buddy now. Yeah. Um, we had a conversation that kind of goes through his label. He owns a label called the Artisan Era. Lots of uh, band stuff that we talk about. Yeah, uh, touring. His touring stories. L- life now dealing with coronavirus. Like yeah. People staying inside. People staying inside. Know? Yeah, right. talking about the situation down in Nashville. Um, we talk about uh, what it's like up here in Vancouver a little bit. We go through kind of history of playing guitar and, and what what we all kind of went through when we were younger and music that we liked. And mm-hmm. So hopefully you enjoy the Past episode. jobs and experiences. Past jobs and experiences. Uh, we know that you're probably just at home hanging out, so if you want to hang out with us, enjoy the episode. And let us know who you want to... Uh, who want we to should sp- talk to next. Yeah. yeah. Who I mean, the fuck should we interview? Yeah, we know plenty of people we could hang out with, so... Yeah, we know lots of people. Oh, for sure. Um, so, have fun. Enjoy the episode. Uh, welcome back to our apartment where we had nothing better th- uh, to do today than film three separate guitar-related things. <laughs> you kind of fucked it up. <laughs> I fucked up my talking. You kind of fucked it up. <laughs> oh, oh, what's the clapping thing? Oh, you're going to do it. Welcome back to our apartment where we're so fucking bored we filmed three different things today. <laughs> oh, you did it way better than that was a way better <laughs> intro than I did. I just tried it and it sounded like shit. Yeah, so. I did better, so. Well, uh, we have um, via Skype our buddy Malcolm. He plays in a band called In Fury, uh, Loathing Requiem, uh, other bands I'm sure we'll talk about. I don't remember. In Full Darkness. In Full is Darkness. Your bar- band? Was it Barned. Band? Wow. Fucking Barn. That's your Barn? <laughs> <laughs> That's my Barn. Yeah, um, so he's joining us from, where are you? Are you in Nashville? Is that where Nashville, you? Tennessee. Very good. Yeah. He's in Nashville, Tennessee, where uh, evading tornadoes is a daily occurrence. <laughs> and and uh, uh, we're in Vancouver, Canada. That's true. We're in Vancouver, Canada. Where, where nothing getting really happens. rained on is an almost yeah, daily occurrence. They, well, I mean, ever since we were a kid, they always talk about like the big earthquake that's coming, but... Uh, I didn't live here uh, my whole childhood, so you can just shut the fuck up about that. You don't know? You don't know about that? No, I remember when I did live here that we had uh, those Hold earthquake on a second, drills. <laughs> they had those earthquake <laughs> drills, and you had to like go under the desk. Yeah, I remember that. No, oh. but ever since I was a kid in BC, they're always like, "Big earthquakes coming! It's gonna change! It's gonna! It's gonna yeah, be crazy!" Yeah, they were like, "Oh, it's gonna happen." Oh, okay, but you know, you've heard about that. Yeah. Oh, okay, great. But then okay. when I moved to Alberta, I was never again. Never again. Okay. Anyway, so how's it going, Malcolm? It's going great. How are you guys doing? Great. Um, we're doing fine. We've we're, been, we're yeah. good, yeah. We've been staying sitting busy. around all day. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're staying busy. I, th- I think sort so. Of. Yeah. We're playing lots of video games, watching lots of movies. Yeah. That's perfect. Um, That's like, hey, this Malcolm, is kind of giving us a good, you know, what life is supposed to be. Except yeah. I agree dangerous. with that. <laughs> I agree with that. I mean, like, who the fuck wants to work? I'm sorry. But who nobody. wants well, a job? Who wants a job? I mean, we are working. But we're doing what we want to do yeah. and trying to make revenue streams out of it. Yeah, um, it, the we, the, uh, the time that we've spent at home has been very productive. It goes in waves. I don't know about you, Malcolm, but it's like for us, it's been going in. Uh, I like okay, so as con- for context, this is like April fourth, so we're like deep into the throes of self isolation. Oh, fuck! You just <laughs> want to say that? Uh, it's the second time you said yeah, that today. So it's April fourth, twenty twenty. So we're like Whoa. sitting. What? Oh, four twenty three. We're just like sitting at our, in our apartment all the time because of coronavirus, and we're all just hanging out. And uh, and yeah, so with us, with our apartment, it's been us being productive and then playing video games and then being productive and then playing. Is that yeah. kind of what you've been doing, Malcolm? Uh, uh, I don't really play video games, unfortunately, mm-hmm. because oh. I can't be productive when I play video games. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually gave my uh, Xbox to my little brother to oh, write yeah. an album, like. I was playing Call of Duty so much, I was like, oh. I have to give my little brother this fucking machine so I can, you know, continue on with life. Um, I, don't even, I don't even think I knew that you had a little brother. Yeah, I have a little brother. He's, uh, I'm, I'm 19 years older than him. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. What the f- My dad's so You're 19 busy. years his senior. That's true. You're 19 years his senior. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So when's the last time you played a video game? Uh, well, I play like you know stuff on my phone. A, re- a real video. Oh, game. dude, he a totally plays video. tons of games on his phone. He'll like play all these wacky games. It's yeah. just like, I mean, I know, but on tour it's just like, <laughs> fuck, man, oh, you're playing like the most games. mindless. Yeah. What was that Arch Archero? Is yeah, Archero. Yeah, yeah. That Archero. was that's totally a tour game. You know, yeah, sometimes tour, yeah. you just gotta keep your brain. 
you know, working yeah. somehow on tour. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if I um, quite made. I don't know. If, I don't know if that game kept the brain working. It looks just about as most the most mindless thing ever. Mindless. Yeah, mindless. So. But yeah. how how long has it been since you played like a a real video game? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm, that's uh, probably like sat down and played with controllers. Um, maybe 2017. Well. Damn, dude. That's pretty crazy. Fucking dedicated. Yeah. So you just but, been playing a, like a lot of guitar? Or is that your? Is that no, the? No, 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 no. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, I watch streamers play. Yeah. While, uh, while in my downtime, because it's like I live yeah. vicariously through them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Um, you have like an addictive personality with yeah, video 100%. games, so you you have to like, mm-hmm. it's all or nothing. Yeah, I want I want I want to see the games in action, yeah. but if I'm playing them, then nothing productive yeah. in my life happens. Yeah, I, I think that um, I think there's, it's it's like watching video game streams is really uh, addictive for me because I think that it takes skill to get to a certain level of a video game, yeah. and it's really nice to just watch everything right. in the game without having to develop all that skill yourself. Totally. Which Absolutely, is a reason why I think people are I- enjoying videos where I learn something on YouTube or when somebody, you know, like, I think that that's... It's far beyond what they could learn, so they're, like, vicarious. I mean, maybe, but it's just also just generally easier because they're like, oh, I don't have to put in the time. I can just skip through and see how good this person has gotten this game or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, it's definitely enjoyable. I've I've watched a lot of game streams as well. It's like skipping to the back of a Goosebumps book, you know? It's like, you know, you want to see what happens. You don't want to read through all the bullshit. And then... so, so yeah, you just want the the final the finale <laughs> uh, finale uh, the finale. Yeah. Um, so, do you do do you read a lot of Goosebumps books? Um, I have every single one of them. Whoa! I think Whoa. they're still at my dad's house. I should take a picture of it. You should take this a picture is of it. An um, interesting development. Every single Whoa. one. Okay, so uh, let's rattle off a few. Uh, say cheese and die. Oh, that's like literally the only one I fucking yeah. know. I um, remember because the cover of that one's so funny. The, the abominable snowman from Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> that was I don't know one. That one. <laughs> yeah, that's obscure shit, dude. I don't yeah, know. that's obscure. Um, there was another one. I mean, the classics like the haunted mask or whatever, right, and yes. then like uh, what, you already said what say cheese and die, right? Say yeah. cheese and die. Yeah, you know those are classics. But then, man, when when you get into like ep- or uh, book number sixty four or something, and you come up with like. I can't remember the name of it, but the cover of it was like, uh, like scrambled eggs. It was like alien yeah. scrambled eggs or some shit. Yeah, yeah. What was that one? Oh yeah. my god, I fucking yeah. had that one. I have it. It's fuck. It's amazing. And I think I, I really like art artwork like that, like painted artwork. And I think yeah. a lot of that comes from like Goosebumps books, dude. Because every every uh, every book came out, and then our school publishers or whatever would come in. And we'd mm-hmm. go buy them. Have the book fair. Would, yeah, the book fair. And I would see them. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, man, this is awesome. And that's how, guys... like, death metal art is to me. It's like, Talking oh, really? about <laughs> egg monsters oh, from dude, Mars. That's... Egg monsters yeah. from Mars. That's it, dude. That's it. Green yeah, ass wow. egg, yeah. Green, <laughs> Green ass egg. With, like, a, yeah, a weird scrambled egg monster coming out. Yeah. Their no yolk yeah. is the fucking Ooh, uh. that tagline. Wow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, so you, you think that... Um, you think that there's like a really big part of albums that offer like the same kind of nostalgia, like album covers. So like for me, like I imagine. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Because this one perfectly. This is in this pink, green, and neon colors. With this, death aborted metal. terror vision. Yeah, exactly. This is death metal. Yeah, you exactly. Guys, yeah. Yeah. For That's sure. Awesome. I mean, oh, I guess I should show. That's okay. I'll, I'll show it on the. I'll have the uh, I'll have then, the actual thing up there. Yeah, I think it's Terror Vision is what I'm thinking of the like really pink one. Is it like one of the new ones? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's like green, so cool. green and pink. Yeah, that with like what the zombies. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. What a cool. Yeah, fucking it's album very color. similar. Like that looks like the scrambled egg monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a like, that's yeah. So cool. If goosebumps for adults, actually yeah. scary goosebumps. Right. Well, I mean, it sounds like Malcolm is continuing to read these books. He has all of them in his collection. <laughs> and is still scared of them. And he's still scared of them. I haven't seen any of the... There's movies with Jack Black, I think, right? Or a TV show, right? They made a Goosebumps TV show? Def- I haven't I seen I mean, okay, any. they definitely made a TV show. Yeah, there's like... I think there's two movies. I saw half of the first one, and I was like, what am I doing in my life? I 
I can't continue <laughs> to watch this. And I stopped. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, I think there's two movies. Wasn't uh, Tales from the Crypt, like the Goosebumps uh, TV show equivalent? It was like a cartoon little horror short, and that was with the the blue guy. Crypt Keeper. Yeah, Crypt the Crypt Keeper, Keeper was yeah. telling the story. That was on HBO. Fucking... That was definitely... Um, a lot more provocative a, than Goosebumps, was on for sure. Oh, it was right. like some cartoon. I, the one I always remember was something about a guy, like an old man lived in this house, and he had a fucking like pet bird or something, mm-hmm. and yeah. the bird magically went missing. And That doesn't sound very magic. He had like people come <laughs> replace bird the carpet, yeah. and there was like a fucking <laughs> lump in the carpet. Uh-huh. So I guess the insinuation was he killed a, his own bird, and he... Put him under the carpet. Uh, okay, so for anybody that wanted to watch that episode, <laughs> you just had the whole thing ruined. I feel like it's That's probably good. not true because why does it's, that matter? Like it's it was twenty pro- years he old. He probably died or something. I think I'm misremembering it mm. really poorly. Maybe the bird killed him. Maybe that's what happened. Right, hmm. the bird, the murderous bird. You know, yeah, that would be a twist. Murderous bird. Holy shit, man! Hey, <laughs> you have a lot of guitars behind you, Malcolm. What's uh, what's going on there? Oh, that's my guitar rack. Oh yeah, <laughs> are you playing? Uh, Self-explanatory here. Uh, there's there's an Ibanez. There's a Schecter and an Ibanez. Uh, one of the Ibanez. Um, it's like the first guitar I ever had, or oh, maybe yeah. the second. When um, when did you get that? I I think I got that one in particular uh, in like 2008. But I had a preview. I had the exact. I had the exact same guitar twice, um, and oh. I think that's the second one. I oh, think yeah. the other the other one's in the other room. But my wife put some chemicals on a box down in the basement, and mm, okay. my my guitar was in um, a guitar case in a right. Kiesel box. Oh yeah, in the basement that guitar. So she put uh, some like weed killer or something whatever on top of the box, oh, yeah. and it leaked on the box, and got into the case and mm-hmm. corroded the entire front of the guitar. Oh, so I, I, so I pulled it I pulled it out. The other day, and I'm kind of thinking about like um, sanding it down and just like you know building it up from scratch, just to have a project that I don't really fucking need because I don't have time to do anything. But you did, know, uh, did it just fuck up the finish? Uh, and that and the pickups are all like corroded. Whoa! Like, yeah, wow, yeah, that's fucked up. Does it yeah. look kind of cool? No, it looks no. it looks terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> looks okay. pretty bad. Oh, that's um, pretty bad. Okay. But, uh, so but, the divorce is... In yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She's lucky I had another one. That's all I'm right. saying. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, um, so, you got, so you're saying that was the first... You didn't start playing guitar in 2008. No, no. I started playing in like... I want to say... I was in 10th grade. So that was like 2001. Okay. Whoa. What? Yeah. <laughs> I just was I was very young in 2001 Claire is uh, yeah. much younger uh, Malcolm how old are you right now? I'm 35 35 I'm 32 And I'm 26 Um, I guess you're not that much younger though I mean I mean that's 8 years That's a, almost a decade Yeah the, Well we're uh, 7 years apart right? I think yeah I think we're 7 Yeah 7 years But the uh, Yeah I mean Whenever I talk about When I started playing guitar You were like Oh I was 6 Yeah Because <laughs> I, I was I was um, <laughs> I was 12 when I started playing guitar. So oh. I was in in 2000? So I was, what, like five or something? I don't know. But you five were cute. Or <laughs> no, I mean, you were cute when you were a kid, though. You yeah. were so cute. You had, like, Yeah, you, you got to say, glasses. you were so cute, not you were You were cute. cute. Yeah, yeah. I think I was 16 or 17 when I started playing guitar. I started playing bass, bef- like, first. Oh, yeah. And, and then someone broke into my house and stole my bass. Oh. So... Oh. Uh, was that me? What? It's somebody. Uh... I don't know. I didn't. I mean, you just said, "Was that me?" So that was uh, you. You, face, you Facebook, broke into your house. So Facebook you're... popping up. Um. So yeah, I, I I think I started later than most people start an instrument, yeah. like guitar. Yeah, that's a little bit later. Yeah. Um. But, but when yeah, did you start bass? I started bass. I think I was. Uh, I think two thousand nine or no no. Either 2000 or like the end of 1999 because I was hella in a limp biscuit. Oh, and, dude, totally. And corn. And I was yeah. like, I want to be like fieldy and like play bass. And 
yeah. you know, be a fucking. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty much what he sounds like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> lots of slap. Yeah. It played it really low. Yeah. Yeah. I was really oh, into new metal as well. Yeah, we I, all yeah. had a new yeah. me- like new metal yeah. first. Well, you seems. weren't really into new metal. I really liked Slipknot. Yeah, that was like my first band. Do you think Slipknot is new metal, Malcolm? Um, at the time, yeah, yeah. I think I, I was. Like, that, I think that was the tapering off or like the gradient point of yeah. like new metal and radio metal and extreme metal. It kind of they are particularly special because they're extreme for new yeah. metal and they're extreme for radio metal, but they're they're not extreme enough to be extreme metal. Yeah, totally. You know yeah. what I mean? They seem kind of like outliers. Like, they're a little bit heavier than, than the bullshit I was listening to. Like, but were they, like, oh, sort of on the tail end of the new metal phase? Because, yeah, I remember first discovering them in around 2001, 2002. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's, like, the latter end that's, of that's, the... That's when everything started to taper off. And they were, like, yeah. later into that, I'm pretty sure, as far as when I found them. Yeah. Um, and like when Iowa came out, they start to blow up really bad, like yeah. really good, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, blast beats and shit. And it's like, it was like them and system of down, they carried on and then everyone else kind of just tapered yeah. off. Yeah. Well, there's you always know? those like, um, uh, pivot, pivot bands or like pivot yeah. artists at the yeah. tail end of a, of a phase that sort right. of like pushes the genre into a new direction. I'm right. mainly thinking of like classical music because there's always a composer at the end of a certain era of classical music that right. that catapults it into the next yeah phase. Definitely. so um when you uh when you were younger did you just like that's all you wanted to do is play guitar or play bass and stuff like that or were you like um i'm also really into this or were you just like totally sold on music right away um when i was in high school i uh had a buddy went to his house uh his dad had a bass. I started playing it. I fell in love, and that's yeah. all I could think about. Yeah. Um, that and, and breeding reptiles. So I was breeding geckos <laughs> in high school. Oh, in high school? Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn. So that was, that was all I wanted to do. It was just like I want yeah. to have you know animals to breed and, and, and do that thing, which is completely separate from you know music. And then, uh, yeah, man. As soon as wow. I I got the, like he actually, uh, my friend's dad loaned me a bass for like probably mm-hmm. like eight months, because my parents didn't want to buy me a bass. Yeah, they wanted to see what, you know, if they're if you stay interested. Right, it's right. a risk. Yeah, financial yeah. risk. You're like, and nah, I, you know, yeah. you and buy I it, it, it sits in a closet. I played it every day, and back then we had like a compact computer with dial-up internet, and like tabs were like, what the fuck. Yeah. So, but I was I was trying to figure out like you know Rage Against the Machine songs and you know yada yada, and they saw me like continuously play every day, right? Like you know, and they then eventually that Christmas they bought me a bass, and uh, I was happy as fuck, and I kept playing, and then um, once that bass was stolen from me, I bought a guitar on eBay for like a hundred bucks, and bought uh. Good, um, uh, Master Puppets and Injustice for All and Black Album Tap Books from Guitar Center. Oh, and sick. Did, and learned all the solos because I thought that, like, if I could learn all the solos, then I could play rhythm guitar. Yeah. The, Which the, is, like, the, weird. <laughs> those, um, those solos were always, like, a, a standard, like, a, a benchmark for how good you were at guitar when I was younger. Yeah. If you could play fucking uh, Nothing Else Matters and you could right. also do the solo from... Yeah. Like if you can play the riff from Battery and you like those were like the yeah. like anybody at my school that could play that stuff, I was like, whoa, really? Yeah. Like wow. And Long now away. I look back and I'm like, Kirk Hammett sucks. <laughs> you know, there's some I issues mean, there. <laughs> I understand like he wrote yeah. so much amazing stuff, like right. Revo- like I don't know if revolutionary, but it's just like really unique sounding stuff. And yeah. and I mean they're they wrote some amazing songs and the solos, you know, at the I mean, not even at the time. At the at the time, you had Marty crazy, Friedman. I mean, Malmsteen was in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. too. I mean, you know, yeah. it's like way crazier guitar players. But I mean, there's stuff that that's definitely well written, and the yeah, solos are yeah. well composed. I think it's so. Just yeah. sometimes the execution is, is a, poor. Is a, I, th- <laughs> I think the thing with Kirk Hammett was you can 
probably if you think of a Metallica song, you can hum the solo totally for the song. And it's like yeah. it's, it's an earworm. Yeah. And, and boom, you, you got yeah. the solo. Yeah, that's um, the thing. Well composed, like really yeah. memorable. And the songs, too. Like there's so many songs you could list off that you could just like sing right now. Like I feel like a shitload of people. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, I, I, I feel like that's also whenever we're writing music uh, as a band, if if you write a riff and then you walk away from the jam spot and the next day you're still humming it, you're like, OK, that's a good right sort of like if you can get that, then it's like, OK, then that's probably a good indication that you're on the right track with that idea or whatever. Uh, no, yeah, I, absolutely. Yeah. I, I sort of we've agreed on that before, but mm-hmm. my opinion on that is kind of changing because we I don't know if this was on TV or we were in a grocery store or something and a shit fucking song was playing like <laughs> absolutely terrible <laughs> and I hated it it sounded terrible like bad melody everything and it got stuck in my head mm. and I was very but, mad but you know I mean like was that based on repetition like did, did you hear it before and then I had like, never I had never heard that song before oh shit and it was like an annoying melody okay, and then so it was stuck gotta, in my head I gotta I got maybe they shred <laughs> Maybe they should. Um, the uh, the th- if if music appreciation was strictly objective, and there was no subjectivity to it whatsoever. So your upbringing didn't matter. What your friends liked when you were in high school didn't matter. What your parents liked didn't matter. If none of that mattered, would you like that song? Or like, because I feel the same way. I'll listen to a song, but like this song sucks. And I'll think about it, it's like, why do I think it sucks? No, dude, we talked. We talked about it. We oh. talked about the, oh, the song. song sucks. Yeah, <laughs> the song fucking sucks. I'm just saying that if, like, imagine a world where it's like totally objective music appreciation. Is it a bad song? I mean, I feel like maybe I'm kind of a dick, but you're a, but, you're 100% but dick. Yeah. because I yeah. have a lot of classical theory knowledge, yeah, a lot of the times the music I shit on the most are ones that like don't abide by a lot of classical music rules. Right, right. So, yeah, so I can agree with that. So for that yeah. reason, I feel like that song it does objectively suck. Yeah, that sounds like the story of my life, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, yeah. I'm just now as an adult trying to like really, well, I think for like the past five years I've really opened up. But before I was just like, if it's not metal, it's not music. Shit sucks. Yeah, uh, I was super elitist and like, especially right. with the explosion of. Um, social media and then seeing uh people post the same shit and how cringy it is and me going back in time and seeing my old posts and seeing my opinions be just as elitist uh wow man that's it's so crazy to think that like like here's a here's a example me and uh a couple of the older members of the band went to go see um nevermore uh, I think this was like 2007 or eight or something, maybe, I don't know, mm-hmm. uh, down in Atlanta. And they were playing with a band called Into Eternity. Yeah. Which is like, hell sh- yeah. Yeah, fucking, I know the guys, yeah. They were shreddy, and I was like yeah. in love with them. And uh, Nevermore, I mean, you got Jeff Loomis, fucking shreds. Yeah. yeah. And then we got Opeth. So we got to the show, and we watched the first two bands, and we left before seeing Opeth. Right. And I regret that to this day. Yeah. Because that's yeah. a dumb fucking thing to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, is it 2007? Something like that. It was 2007, 2008. So that would have been right before Ghost of Perdition. I think Watershed or uh, I, I don't. I love Opeth and I don't remember any of their album titles just because like. Yeah. Uh, I think it was. It might have been Ghost Reveries, but Ghost Reveries. Sorry, yeah, that's yeah, that's probably like that. the era. Yeah, because yeah, no, that's definitely the era. Yeah, mm-hmm. which which was like a really cool era for that band because they that was right before they started getting way more kind of like virtuoso singing. Ah, right, right, yeah. Which which I mean wow, at that point, job. thank you. Uh, at that point, <laughs> I sort of stopped. I also stopped kind of listening to them. Like I love yeah. Blackwater Park and Still Life and deliverance and and uh uh my arms rehearse and stuff and then yeah ghost reveries was i'm sorry is such a fucking weak album name my arms your hearse 
<laughs> yeah, it's so fucking I mean, emo. It's dude. emo. What? What? What is? Because if somebody's dying in your arms. <laughs> because yeah, it's like you're my love and you're dying. Yeah. So you're my love and you're dying. It's pretty emo. Be- people yeah. know their band more than you. <laughs> that's the that's oh, that's always the best comedy. Oh yeah, the band's more popular than yours. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the heat. I love that the one. If you have an opinion, popular. if you're in a band yeah. and you have an opinion, you know you're getting shit on. So yeah, yeah. that's true. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, so you saw Into Eternity, who has crazy guitar playing. Yeah. And Nevermore, who has obviously crazy guitar playing. Yeah. And uh, and but you said you left op- before Opeth played. Why before, did you guys leave before Opeth played? Because we were like shit's not in our bag you know it was like right uh you were from just what sort we of, knew of felt... opeth at the time it was just like acoustic guitars clean singing and like yeah. we were all like about shred and like right met, you know just like more dead on metal stuff right but which i mean i gotta say it's a pretty melodic package it's a pl- pretty yeah. melodic tour package Every band has melodic vocals. What? Yeah. You're looking at me with your side eye because you fucked up your talking. I fucked up my talking. I trying to see if, I, if yeah, I, yeah. I caught you. I, I did catch up. I feel, I feel like if you had gone to that show, Clara, you would have, I you would have wanted I to leave right away. I wouldn't have gone. I wouldn't have gone. Yeah. And that's, and, uh, so we talk about elites. You yeah. This person over here. And hang on. Because you don't like in melodic school, music? In high school, <laughs> I was... He doesn't like melodic music. <laughs> I don't like clean singing. <laughs> There's oh, okay. a few things. But in high school, I was way more of an elitist prick than I am now. And I still am sort of an elitist prick. But there yeah. is, like, lots more music, lots more stuff with clean singing that I have grown to like or do like. Like, even when I was an elitist prick, I've always listened to Demi Borger, so I was kind of fucking hypocritical because I do like their clean singing. Yeah. But aside from that... As soon as clean singing has started, I've always been like, turn that shit off. So yeah, back I in was like that for a long time. Yeah, in 2007, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't have even like been caught dead at that show. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, like I said, I'm I'm trying to change. I'm more open yeah. to stuff. There is like that um, uh, Black Crown Initiate song that has clean singing in it, and yeah. I think that song is I, really I, cool. I think a bunch of their music does. That Dude, Black Crown is so song. good. Yeah. Oh I, yeah, you I guys like just check out their EP. Yeah, oh, check yeah? out their first EP. It's it's yeah. magically, it's yeah. heavy yeah. and it's like a machine. And James does crazy death metal vocals over it, and the clean singing in it is is, is beautiful. It's it's it, they really, I really, really love really that band. Them. I love those. Yeah, guys. like that song "Withering Waves" is awesome. I yeah, think the new I th- one. Yeah, I think that that band had a lot of, um, they had a lot of trouble because they they toured nonstop for yeah. a while. And we toured with them in 2014. And that was yeah. right when that EP came out, I think. And, uh, and they definitely seemed like they were touring too much. <laughs> like, and I think they took they had, a long break. They and took then, a long break. They had some uh, member issues. Right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. that usually is like a big part of, uh, you know, right. That yeah. Thing. I, but, uh, I, I, I think they'll come back they, strong. I think that they had some really awesome stuff. We had their CD in our van the entire tour, and we were like, oh, this is great. But they had to drop off the tour because their van broke down. So they, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that was actually a crazy tour because it was it was the Faceless, Rings of Saturn, uh, Us, uh, Fallujah, Black Crown Initiate, and a band from Canada called Fatality. Dude, and that's an insane tour. Yeah, it was super fun. It was just a Canadian tour. And, well, we did three, we did three shows in the States, but it was mostly Canadian. And um, there, there's a big gap between. So we started on the, on the east in eastern Canada. I think the first show was Quebec City, mm-hmm. and um, between like you've toured Canada a few times. So you, the big gap yeah. between you have a big population center over in the east in Ontario, and then you have a big right. ish. You don't get to a big population center until you get to you know even Calgary, Edmonton, right? And right. then it's the drives are a little bit more uh, reasonable, but. The we had two days off from Ottawa to Thunder Bay. I think I don't think we no we didn't play Thunder Bay. Was we that the faceless off. Uh, Moose tour? That's the exactly yeah. And so in the middle of the night, we were like, okay, we told all the bands because we had toured that route a couple of times, and I'm sure a couple of the other bands also had. And we're like, don't drive in the middle of the night. 
unless you have a co-pilot, like just be safe, like because this area is really well known for people hitting fucking moose and the faceless hit a moose in the middle of the night because I don't think that they had a co-pilot and they totaled their van and yeah. we to- we towed their trailer for the rest of the tour. Damn. Um, yeah, but uh, but Black Heart Initiates van broke down as well. So it was like just like lots of That's fucking crazy. problems. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it sucked for them. Like it's a it's a bummer. You that know? fucking sucks. That was really a, makes me uh, scared to go on tour. Claire's first tour got with, canceled. Yeah, with her band, <laughs> it was supposed to happen COVID. this month. Yeah, yeah, it was supposed Damn to start man. on fucking April first. It would have uh, began. I've only ever been on. Uh, it was like what five, six days in right. August, six day yeah. tour. This was going to be a full cross Canada thing, which I was terrified to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's. I mean, touring cool. is scary, right? The first tour I ever did was with a band called Destroy, Destroy, Destroy. And I filled in for their bass player. Yeah. Um, and we've toured with a band called Thor, which was like just a dude who like would put a predator mask on stage. <laughs> it was very yeah. obscure. Like, Thor it was. It was and a predator mask. Is he Canadian? I mean, it, probably. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. No. It, yeah, probably. I'm uh, looking it up. Is it uh, Thor is a heavy metal band for Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, active from 1977? There you go, dude. Holy yeah, we toured yeah. that guy. Yeah, we played with him as well. Um, That's funny. That was weird as shit. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was like back in the day. So when we toured, you know, during those times, it was like we were all in the van. No one had a smartphone. We had like yeah. an atlas and we'd like print off like Google pages or not Google, Yahoo maps or something. Like map quest and yeah. shit. Map yeah. quest. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then we'd try to get to the gig and it was, dude, it's so. It would be so fucking boring. Holy dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got into so much shit on those older tours than I've ever, right. like now it's just like, okay, everyone's on their phone. We got GPS, everything's safe. Yeah. No big deal. It's yeah. perfect. Uh, compared to back then, compared back then yeah. we were like, literally like we used to raid dumpsters just to see if they had donuts at the fucking, uh, like the Dunkin' donuts. Cause they throw, the, they, they throw their shit away. You know, right. they throw, yeah, they no, throw, no, I, I understand. Yeah. So yeah, we it's were not like, as crazy as it sounds. It's just day old bread. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is crazy to say it like we used to raid dumpsters. That sounds bad. <laughs> but be like, we used to get the day olds from Dunkin's. It's like, okay, well that that's fine. But yeah, yeah. It, it's funny because anybody anybody <laughs> that's watching or listening to this, they might be like, oh, being a touring musician is cool. It's essentially being a hobo. Yeah. 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 One hundred percent. No matter hobo. what time. What? I don't know if you did this intentionally, but your fucking the facial expression you gave me <laughs> after saying eating day old bread and it was the way you no, looked at me didn't. was so fucking. Yeah, that's why you're losing. Your that's shit. why I was losing my shit. I can't even imitate because my face can't do the thing. But you, your face can't do the You thing? looked at. Me. I, can't, I can't even do a straight face. <laughs> you're like, yeah, I know it's not as crazy as eating day old bread. And you turned. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you turned slowly, and your eyes were like half open, and you had a teeny little bit of a raise here, <laughs> like a little. <laughs> what the fuck? Your, your, this side of your nose and this part of your mouth was like lifted up a bit, like you know, and there's like a stink, a stank. That stinky. And, but brand. I can't, I can't raise <laughs> my face in that way. Uh-huh. But yeah, like a, like a. Like, it's not, it's still not okay, even if you're calling it day. No, I see, okay. I see. Yeah. I would never I do see. it now, but, you oh, know, yeah. back then. Yeah. Oh. That's so fucking But, funny. yeah, anybody yeah. listening would be would like, oh, being a tour musician is cool. But it's 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 oftentimes very, uh, I mean, it's just boring. I mean, uh, Malcolm and I, I mean, Claire, you know this, but we were on tour in Europe recently, and it was yeah. like, yeah. I, the nicest that you could imagine it being. That was mo- is, the most fun tour I've ever been on. It's the most, yeah. I mean, hey, it was amazing for me too. It was, it was comfy and it was awesome, but it's still boring as yeah. fuck. Yeah, it's still so boring. And every time you yeah. go on tour, I am scared. Yeah, I'm always very nervous about 
uh, vehicle crashes, uh, whether that's a plane crash, a bus crash, a van crash. Kayla whatever. was very scared about that tour for some reason. She Always was like, very nice. oh, really? just, be- just because uh, that was the first time, you know, I toured Europe and, you know, she can't get there yeah. and like, you know, something bad happens, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you know, motherfuckers die on tour, you know, it's just sure. a thing. Yeah. So yeah. for us to be so I've- far away. Yeah. yeah, I was I was pretty scared for like I'm scared for your Europe tours because I've been to Europe a couple times and it's it, I feel like it's sort of a well known thing that European bus drivers are fucking insane, like they just drive through mountain passes so fast like going in and around like when I was in uh, Croatia with a friend we took an overnight bus. I luckily fell asleep, but my friend said he was up all night, like, fucking thinking that this was the night we were going to die because it's, like, pitch black outside, and the bus driver was, like, driving super fast on these fucking, like, mountain roads where it's just a drop-off on the other side. If I had been awake, I probably would have been, like, fucking hyperventilating. Yeah. But, yeah, shit like that. And then we're telling our friends about it, and they're like, yeah, that's just, like, how fucking European bus drivers drive. Right. Um, I don't think the bus drivers that we had on this tour were sketchy, but the roads are not... I mean, it was. We I were guess it the depends. City, you know? that was, where we didn't go through crazy are. spots. I think no. there was like maybe one spot they were they were kind of concerned that the weather was going to get weird, but it didn't. Maybe like no. somewhere in the mountains, like the Netherlands or something. Yeah. I don't even remember. I, the craziest I don't thing I would... that happened was like the fucking uh, group of crazy Indians oh, or something, right? In, in Switzerland, was it Switzerland? It was in Switzerland. Where they just like want to fight everybody. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell you about that. You didn't I don't think I really told you much about anything on that tour. No, all you tell me is I'm fucking bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. I want to come home. There was like a big group of dudes outside the venue. They tagged when the, the fucking venue... van or the bus. Yeah, they spray yeah, they painted the bus. In. Whoa. Yeah, because there was some there was some rapper that was playing at the downstairs venue, and I mean it was a packed venue down there, and there was people spilling out into the fucking street. Like, it was a way more people there than there was at our fucking show. Yeah, definitely. And, um, <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah, it was, and that was weird. I don't really know what the hell happened, but there were, like, multiple fights broke out. The security was, like, making sure, like, oh, we I know were what all happened. staying in groups. What happened? Uh, drinking age is, like, 15 or 16 there. Oh, right. Uh, That's what happened. Like, hormonal That's insane. teenagers being drunk. That is insane. That's too young. That's it, it was like, oh, you can you can drink beer when you're 16, but oh, you can't cool. drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what okay. it was. Isn't that Drink crazy? two beers then. You know, it's like, yeah, this, yeah. It's like what? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was nuts. That's insane. Uh, I mean, other than that, I don't think I felt unsafe, except for that, that one night did suck, but I don't think I felt unsafe on that tour. No, no the um, driver drivers were cool. Yeah. As far as yeah, driving sp- good. That's yeah, cool. as far as driving, yeah, they were yeah. fine. Otherwise. And I mean, South America, I think, is even scarier for driving. Yeah, like dangerous drives and stuff. I, yeah. I was nervous yeah. when you went to Mexico, and I was really nervous when my dad went to South America, mm. and he was taking tons of buses everywhere, and he told me about some sketchy bus rides, and I'm like, oh hey, shit, yeah, yeah. maybe yeah, don't do that. The, you know, if fucking like shitty buses going up these mountain yeah. passes and stuff. That sounds the scary. fear for the fear that you had for Mexico was founded. Very mm-hmm. well founded. The guy selling our merch, he would um, he would drive all night. He would take a half hour break to take a nap in the middle of the night, maybe. And we were driving. We had five, four or five shows, and we uh, we drove. I think it was twelve hour, twelve hours between two uh, two of the shows. And so he was up in the morning, sold merch at the show, got drunk. Uh, packed up the van with us uh the van it was a sprinter van and there was like 13 people in it and it was like seating for like 10 like it was like there's there's it's not good to have that many people in a in a van because it was the opening band as well so everybody piled in he drove all night uh after after getting after drinking and then got to the venue cocaine's a hell of a a nap (laughs) yeah took yeah took a bit of a nap and then woke up and sold merch all night. Got drunk, he sold the and merch. Then drove us the next night, and we were like, "Dude, are you okay? Like, you need to fucking take you like go like somebody here will sell the merch. Like, Holy that was shit. sketchy. All yeah. of us were like, "When is this guy sleeping?" It was that was. Fucked. I don't like that. But I, I don't I don't think that's well. That is the norm, but I don't think I, <laughs> he's a robot. 
That guy's yeah, a robot. that's what he was. Yeah, yeah. So, but that's, uh, yeah. I mean, I, like I think it, I think that the standards for transportation in South America for touring bands is just. I mean, I've heard some, I've heard some bad things. Um, but oh well, whatever. I mean, you gotta throw your life into the hands of a stranger. I guess you, well, I guess you don't. I mean, every time you take a plane, you do. No, one hundred percent. I know. In pl- no, I mean. Planes, yeah. When you're taking all those planes in Australia, I was fucking nervous. Yeah, dude. I'm very, yeah. Obviously, you have lots of paranoia going on. But, yeah, it's, uh, there's I mean, a. I mean, it, there's yeah. a band uh, from this area, not too long ago. That uh, I think it was a couple years ago, they played a show in Alabama or something, or mm-hmm. uh, or somewhere in Georgia, and uh, one of the dudes just fell asleep. Oh fuck. And killed a couple dudes in a band. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like, I mean, it happens no- everywhere. It's yeah. like, you know, yeah. like when when I go to sleep in the on tour, I am very, very anxious. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, especially if I'm sober. So. <laughs> <laughs> Which is. Very rare. And, very rare. <laughs> and. <laughs> Uh, but, so. uh, yeah, man, it's like, I know when I'm it's driving scary. overnight, which is also very rare, but when I yeah. do, uh, yeah. I know that I'm good, but I right. don't, I don't know how someone else is, you know? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, man, if, if you yeah. fall asleep and you hit a fucking guardrail and knock the van off into the fucking pasture of somewhere in Kansas, you're fucked, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you hire a driver and you don't know them ahead of time. Right. You don't know what they're like. And right. there's, there's just also so many other factors. Like you can yeah. be a good driver, but somebody else on the road can be a terrible fucking driver. Or it can be nighttime and an animal, yeah, runs in front of the vehicle. Yeah. Even if there's two people, sometimes yeah. there's not enough time to react yeah. safely. Didn't you guys kill a fucking pig or some shit on yeah, Tetris? Was- <laughs> yeah, big wild boar. Yeah, our driver just smoked it on that tour that we did with you guys in the yeah. states, and it's just like blood and shit everywhere, all over our van, sprayed yeah. like shit. That's so funny. Imagine yeah, if it was, was a deer; you guys would have been in bad shape. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how well, crazy it, well, it is. Honestly, yeah. that that wild boar was fucking big. Yeah, that was a so a deer. I don't know if a deer because a, a moose would fucking. Uh, well, they, they don't Probably have moose. You. I don't think but they have moose. Yeah, yeah, Vermont. But in Canada, we have Vermont moose. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, in Canada, we treat the drives a little bit differently. We know that the infrastructure in the states is just, it is better set up for night driving. It, there's a lot mm. more like, in Canada, some of those, uh, even the Highway One, like you, in the middle of the night, you're like, this is one lane each way, and yeah, that's pretty it's, weird. It's, you know, there's not enough room. There's no, there's yeah. no shit going on. Yeah, yeah, the wildlife is just, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I imagine that it's pretty similar but we've just heard more horror stories i think for mm-hmm. night driving in canada i mean there's the, the... it's so desolate out there in between yeah. cities yeah between i mean it's yeah, like you duh. got you got sorry i don't i don't want to cut you off but you have mm-hmm. so much wildlife in between the cities so out there up there yeah. uh it's pretty <laughs> amazing yeah you know it is mean? cool i mean i love i love living in canada i yeah. fucking i'm stoked to be here um but, but yeah, the, yeah, the highway between Edmonton and Fort Mac is uh, nicknamed the Highway of Death. Right. Because of the amount of people that have died Fuck. in fatal is that the mountains? crashes. It's, it doesn't even go through mountains. It's because it's so cold there. Like Edmonton to Fort Mac is going northern Alberta. And it's so desolate that like the, the people that are driving there are mainly like semi-trucks delivering shit or truckers driving up to work yeah so a lot of them will either just like skid on the road in the oh, winter God, or dude. fall asleep at the wheel Fuck. and it's i think there is a point where it goes like yeah one one way lane it's and horrific. yeah my dad used to drive that and i was like fly to fort mac fucking fly to fort mac mm. and he mainly did fly that's but, horrific yeah anytime he took that highway i was very nervous yeah did you did malcolm did you guys have any canceled tours because of uh, coronavirus yeah, uh, yeah, we had a couple dates um, with one of my favorite bands. I can't even, I don't want to uh, m- mention it. Mention it. Bummer. Uh, but yeah, uh, I was yeah. I was super stoked on on twenty twenty. Uh, yeah. You know, and it's just been a fucking shit show, man. I I know I know this, but I don't know if this is like 
well-known stuff, but are you, what, what are your plans for recording this year? Or do you have anything solidified now? Uh, yeah, everything's solidified. <laughs> we just need to okay. figure out, um, you know, just, just if, need to if it's possible to go yeah. to that part of the country to do the thing. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I don't know what's yeah. going to happen. Um, right. As far yeah. as Andrew's been telling me, I mean, he's keeping, you know, everybody in the band up to date with what's going on uh, on his side of the country. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, it's pretty different than what's happening here. Like, we're yes. pretty lenient here, but yeah. over there, you know, I don't know. So... Well, What's it like where you are then? So it's like they I, just I, I now. Talk to you. They just now right. put the mandate in. Yeah. So, right. I think I saw that. Yeah. So, oh. so now, I think uh, may, maybe it starts on Monday or something. That like, if you're not going to an essential place or going to work or whatever, uh, you get fined or some shit. Oh, and yeah. um, and yesterday I went to go pick my wife up from work. And there was, like, the parking lot for the park was full of people. It's just like, guys, stay the fuck at home. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, not hard to do. The internet's yeah. there. Netflix. You can yeah. do all the shit that you want to do. If you want to work out, do it in your backyard. You don't have to be in the park with around people touching stuff that you might touch. I mean, it's just like, I know yeah. it's not a big deal. Okay? Like, yeah, I'm not around somebody. But, dude... Just for yeah. the fuck's sake, for everyone's sake, just stay yeah. the fuck at home, man. Yeah. Like this, now, it's only going to get worse. Yeah, it's yeah. Only and it's not, it's not a fucking flu. It's very yeah. fucked up. What's happening? Well, I, I, do people there still think of it kind of like a flu? Like people just on your? I mean, it's kind of hard to know what everyone hard. thinks in, in your state, but it's hard um, uh, in Nashville. In Nashville, everyone here is pretty like melting pot. So we got a mixture of like country rednecks and conservative whatever whatever uh yeah. and and hipsters and blah 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 so we have a little bit of everything like nashville right. is like just a smaller vancouver or smaller atlanta or or chicago mm -hmm. but outside of that it's the most redneck god-fearing yeah. bullshit right. that's just like uh and yeah Okay, you don't like you think you can just pray your fucking COVID yes. COVID away. Okay, right. you know it's just yeah. like nuts. I mean, it's so fucked, yeah. It, yeah, dude. It's it's basically outside yeah. of Nashville and Memphis and Knoxville. Outside of those things, it feels like I'm not speaking for for every place, but it feels yeah, yeah. Yeah. it feels like all of that is Arkansas. Sure. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? It just feels yeah. like it goes straight down to Arkansas. Right. right. Yeah. Just... The uh, well, I mean, I I don't think that you'll. I don't know. I think I think our province specifically is doing really well because hmm. uh, we're in BC and it's, uh, like I've been following. I mean, I, it's just like everybody has. We've been following news and reported yeah. cases and stuff. And I think that. I mean, I stopped working like over two weeks ago now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I stopped jamming two weeks ago like. I, yeah oh well, i think longer than that now yeah i mean what it's hard to even honestly is. like just even knowing what day it is 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 your government strange. doing the stimulus thing for you guys or yeah <clears throat> yeah so w w uh on thursday uh tuesday you're signing up for it on thursday i'm signing up monday for, it. for me. Oh, monday yeah um you do it by birth month yeah. so okay and uh and yeah i think that it, they cover like eighty percent of your wage up to a certain amount, and I think that it's basically like you'll be getting two thousand a month potentially. Potentially, a month, that's pretty good. Person, that's, and, pretty, that's uh, pretty good for, pretty, for four pretty months pretty or something. Good. It's pretty, 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 pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. pretty. Yeah. What about you, Malcolm? What uh, What do you do? And uh, what do I do? I don't do shit. I'm just a piece of shit. shit. Uh, <laughs> no. Nah, uh, um. I uh, do stuff for the record label that me and Mike own. Um, oh, cool, yeah. It's pretty much your majority Artisan, of your income, yeah. right? Uh, no, the majority of my income comes from the band, actually. Mo right. right. Uh, everything that comes to the label, we pretty much just rein uh, reinvest into the bands. Put back in. Right. Um, yeah. Are so, you able to keep up with most of that stuff, like record label stuff in uh, self-isolation? 
Oh, it's getting weird. Yeah. Um, right. So things are getting weird. Um, you know, like that, for example, how things work is that uh, you have pre-orders, you order this stuff, and then most bots, you know, when you develop relationships with them, you have a time frame for when you can pay them, you know, to catch up on the stuff and, you know, do that. That's all fucked up now. Everyone right. wants to get paid on the spot. So now you're just right. like, oh, shit. You know, it's not like a, it's, it's, it's scary times when, mm. when, when you're used to having a leeway of like, all right, we can pay this when this pays itself or, you know, we have this time frame to pay this or whatever. So we can get all this merchant for the packages that we put up and yeah. no one's buying them now because they're buying toilet paper. And yes. then the companies are like, we're not going to send it until you pay us in full because uh, we right. can't pay our workers now. So you're yeah. fucked. Mm. So uh, yeah. that's a whole different perspective. Not, wow. And then on top of, you know, not being on tour and doing the yeah. stuff that's that we already thing. had planned. So that, yeah. you know. That's a big thing. Uh, what what are those things for your government? Like, are they putting things in place for small businesses and stuff? Uh, um, there's some stuff going going in circulation. Uh, I haven't really looked into it yet because I am very tunnel vision. And yeah. uh, when something that I personally need to take care of needs to happen, like you know, uh, filming a video or editing a video or writing songs, which I've been like so knee deep in writing a new inferior record. Dude, okay. it's really, really hard to, I can only juggle yep. so many balls. Right. Right. You know, mm. and you can, you can make those testicle balls or, uh -huh. or that's what or, I was thinking, you know, or yeah, the balls I that, that I have in my hand, mm. I can only yeah. have like two or three. Right. right. Okay. You know. Like going back to the the yeah. video game thing, you kind of are exactly all or exactly nothing that. on a certain project yeah. or thing. Exactly mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, are so, you nervous about the future of the label? Um, not yet. Right. Um, I think I expect the worst, and yeah. which is good. I, I mean, yeah. not good, but it's helpful. Yeah. I expect the worst, hope for the best. And uh, I, I think uh, Mike just sent me a screenshot today uh, about mail getting cut off yeah. for yeah. countries now. So right. that's right. a thing. Um, and we ship yeah. worldwide. So now we just lost, yeah. you know, a big part of income from shipping to other countries. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think that Indie Merch, uh, who we do all of our merch through, I think right. that they're running into that right now, too. Yeah. Right. So. Even uh, this this customized girl, there's this website, oh, this, this company. T-shirt company that, yeah. Yeah, from the U.S. that you can, like, make shirts on. And I've made tons of shirts on there. I've, yeah. Like this alluring skull shirt that Dean is wearing, I made on there. And uh, I was just talking to them, and they've closed down their warehouse and everything so they're not shipping stuff out they're not right. making anything anymore and i mean i <clears throat> i placed that order for all the new shirts we just got oh, that must have just got it in right in time yeah like not even that long ago and they shipped it out and then i guess within a few days they completely closed down wow yeah yeah i, th I think so. that i think one of the good things that's going to come out of it is um people are going to learn new ways to innovate and and still make money Using That's true. mostly the internet, using you know, desperation it is, causes innovation. <clears throat> yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you, you definitely are gonna have to adapt, mm -hmm. or you know, or close your yeah. or right. shut down your company. I mean, there's right. plenty of restaurants that. I mean, in BC, there was uh, they they made it legal for restaurants to do to go alcoholic beverages. So, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that, yeah. where it's like you're changing the regulations because of the situation. Right. So, you to know, try to keep everything people, afloat from, you know, lots of, yeah, lots of musicians. I mean, I, I, I see, and I mean, I have, I follow lots of amazing, incredible guitar players on Instagram. I see a lot of people doing Skype lessons that maybe right. didn't do Skype lessons before. Skype right. lessons and, 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 and yeah. That might be and a thing for myself. <laughs> Yeah, you know? which would be, I mean, it'd be amazing um, to now, I mean, we've had the ability to sort of 
reach out and kind of contact the musicians that we really love for a long time right you know because of the internet but right now especially it's just even easier than it ever has been before yeah which is cool i mean i think we're we're lucky yeah Yeah. i think we're lucky that if if something like this were to happen it's good that we have this the sort of social media connection we have to the entire world because as long as you you have like some sort of skill set that people find desirable and maybe even just like a personality that people find interesting you can generate something that people are going to latch on to and will hopefully yeah pay back and and hopefully it keeps people inside because i mean I, i know for bc uh, our province is noting that we've had less. I think today they had the smallest increase of hospitalizations for coronavirus in two weeks. And That's amazing. So I think that the it's sort of flattening here, which is crazy <coughs> because it didn't really get. I mean, we've been almost exclusively in our apartment for the last two something weeks. Yeah. Right. And uh, it's been weird, but I mean, it's been also kind of cool. Yeah, you know, it's been yeah. an interesting nice. thing. I don't. I think it's gone. I I haven't talked to you about this, but I think it's going to be positive for our relationship too. Mm. I mean, I, I disagree. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 I feel like the you need to okay. learn to communicate better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like right. you. I'm saying you. Yeah. <laughs> you, Claire, not him. Yeah. yeah, not 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 the viewer, you not one. No, are you. A bad communicator. <laughs> do you, do you find that? Do you think that? Because uh, what, what does your wife do for work? Um, she uh, uh, she's a property manager, so right. She uh, manages other people's fucking shit, basically. So hmm. her job is considered essential. So she has to go in every day, and right. uh, uh. because she leases apartments. And uh, she has a, a building that's like um, kind of like mid tier, like not super bougie, but very kind of close to being bougie, you know. Yeah. So it's like upper scale, and these motherfuckers have needs that you couldn't believe. Right. And uh, <laughs> um, so she has to, you know, uh, keep them happy, and she yeah. does a damn good job at doing it. But she is essentially supposed to be there, so. They cut her hours a little bit, and she can work from home now a little bit, but she has to go in there, I think, uh, four times a week now instead of mm. five or six. So right. um, that's been different. But, yeah. um, you know, I haven't... But you have, you have the same schedule that you did before. I haven't, had a, jo- I haven't had a real job since 2016. Damn. What uh, was your real job? Uh, I ran, well... I worked at a, a vinyl pressing plant. Right. right. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that, uh, that progression makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. So I, yeah. I I I started there as an inspector where I was like looking at records, like they'll come off the press. I'll look at them, see if they're shit. And if they're shit, I toss them. If they're good, I you know pack them up. And then right. I, I progressed on to uh, learning how to run the presses themselves and fix them, and MacGyver the fuck out of them. Oh uh, really? Yeah, oh, that sounds cool. Yeah, and then uh, I, I moved on to the the plating department, which is like where it all starts. Where like you get the lacquers in that have been yeah. cut from the from the studio, and then you coat those in nickel, and you know make the 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 plating part that presses the you know the stuff. Right. Um, yeah. So that's where I ended, and uh, I did that tour with uh, Entheo when I was in Entheos. Um, mm-hmm. I was basically the assistant manager down there, and uh, we did that tour with Black Dahlia Murder, and it was yeah. fucking like one of the best times of my life to tour with that band and 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 all that stuff. Had a good time. Came back, uh, and then they went to reposition my job, so I did some other stuff, and then they had um, uh, a change in. Uh, well, basically, our boss, they expanded. Our boss went to the bigger bigger building, and we got a new guy in the building. He didn't know what I was there for, so he basically tried to make me go back to the first job I ever had there after being there oh, for five damn. or six years. So yeah. I just walked out, and that was the last job I ever had. <laughs> were you, were uh, you scared when you walked out? No, I wasn't scared when they, when they tried to move my job. Hmm. I left. I was breeding snakes at the time. You know, some of the snakes that I was breeding, uh, you know, 
it's pretty cool when you can sell like a $4,500 animal to somebody. Whoa. Right. And, then, and then you're like, okay, I'm good for weeks. Right. And, and you have a facility basically that you're running. And I had like, I don't know. I think my max capacity was somewhere in the 200s or something. Whoa. Wow. Um, but then the more I toured, you know, I couldn't rely, or not rely is a bad word. I couldn't expect my wife to take care of something right. that's, for one, not her passion, and two, she has a day job, so I can't just, like, let yeah. her. It's a big yeah. responsibility. So, yeah. yeah, so I had a downscale, and then I did that, and then uh, when In Fury kicked up after I left in Theos, and we really started hitting the, the tour life really hard, mm-hmm. and our album started doing good and all that stuff, I was like, okay, uh, I got to get rid of everything. Right. Um, yeah. And then, I, so now a buddy of mine, um, he uh, has the rest of my collection that I didn't sell off, and and uh, wow. you know, I miss it so much. But it's really, it's Damn. really fun. You know. Yeah. Would you say that your uh, previous job inspired you to create your own record label? Like, I, I especially feel that your vinyl releases are are like really yeah really awesome the yeah like the most visually yeah eye-catching out of like any vinyl releases i for see for sure yeah it definitely helped uh the place i worked with the vinyl they didn't really um put enough effort into the cool vinyl right like right. they're they, they they run like all the the big shit like sony and universal you know the the money grab shit where like Sony wants to or whoever Universal wants to re-release Jaws, right. so they'll do like ten million copies of Jaws or something on, on Black Vinyl. Yeah, you know yeah. no one cares about that, but yeah. that's the company that I worked for, so they didn't yeah. care. They didn't need it. Um, but we work actually worked with a a company from Canada to do our vinyl, uh, Precision Pressing yeah. from uh yeah, and uh, they do a great job. Yeah. Uh, because they they all their shit is like handmade. Like the person checking the record is the person doing the thing, and that's really cool. Uh, what what caused me to start the record label in itself was some way deeper, darker shit that was uh, when Inferi got signed to a record label and they fucked us over and and then you know wanted us to pay back half the advance and oh. then. And then I was like, fuck that. Well, take my solo project. They didn't want to take that. So then I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to release my own shit. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to say the re- name of the record label. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know. Well, from listening to everything, it sort of sounds like you took uh, this experience of this uh, vinyl pressing plant that you worked at. And oh, this definitely. Ex- experience with a shitty record label and sort of. Uh, yeah. created something that uh, does it in the way that you wish it had been done Absolutely. in both Absolutely. of those scenarios. No, you're yeah. totally correct on that. I, um, I th- do you think, um, do, are there any people in the industry that you sort of look up to that you're like, ah, oh, that dude did it properly. That was the guy that Ooh. ran a good, sick label and he had all these awesome bands. And I don't know, like, man. Um, I don't know. I feel like every almost every company kind of goes in like waves. There's good periods depending on who right. that person surrounds himself yeah, with, the, or if there's tons of investors and it becomes too yeah. whatever. Then I it's think like, the the motivations, internal motivations, are really important. For sure. Like is the, the is the motivation your profit margin, or is the well, motivation like obviously profit the guys, has to be like the a guys big that I looked thing, forward. But. The guys that I looked up to were the guys that fucked me over. Right. Mm. Which is a uh, so, double bummer. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Uh, at this point, um, I, actually, I'll, I'll take that back. There's, there's one dude that really uh, had our back back in the day. Uh, he he owned a record label called Tribunal Records. Okay. Um, his name's Matt, and he was uh, in a band called Kill Whitney Dead. Oh yeah. It was I like heard back that. in the MySpace days. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he kind of took us under, you know, he took me under his wing, showed me the ropes. Got me connected with like you know some cool stuff, but besides right. that guy, like with the label stuff, I'm so far beyond giving a fuck about label shit. Right. You know, as an artist, like yeah. I just want to write music, be able to put it out, and Make know that, and know that my hard work will yeah. reap the fruits yeah. of my hard work. Yeah. Well, I, and I think I, I, wish I see. 
I, I see a bit of a fucking pattern in your life is where you don't want to make money for somebody else. You're not in it right. to try and make money for the guy above you. You're like, no, I'm, I'm going to make right. my own money. I'm going to make my own yeah. thing. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to make my exactly own money that. from the thing I made. Exactly that. Like yeah. literally, you know, even the, the bands on the label, I love them all and they're all great. I don't profit from the label. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, it's not like, you know, um, we put out a sick record, it does well, and now I can, like, you know, buy stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. not not the case. This is a passion project for me. I'm, I'm actually more or less, ba- like, basically, this is a hobby. Hmm. Yeah. And I'm hoping that one day it will be sick. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You're saying I'm relying the, on... the label is a hobby? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, right. the label takes care of itself. It doesn't take care of me and Mike. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Financially. Because yeah. we could, we put everything back into it and we take care of the bands that we have. Yeah. Right. The band take cares, takes care of Mike and I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, as far as that goes, uh, Mike yeah. still has a job. Um, I don't... But I do a lot of other uh, weird, obscure shit for label. Like I do all the the graphic design shit. There's just it's harder for me to have a place where I leave my establishment and and do something for someone else and then come back and then like literally spend 16 hours a day putting all the graphics for a band that's coming out with a new record and right. you know all the fucking footage yeah. and blah blah blah. <clears throat> so. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, man, it's really cool. It's it's been really cool having a label. I love all the fans that that have like really um really attached to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I yeah, say that like, a, like a lot of great bands. Um the bands are sick and the the fans that love those bands are sick and they really like like cherish what we're doing, which makes us like continue to want to go. Like, mm-hmm. cause this is not an easy thing. Like, you know, yeah. uh, sure. I feel, I honestly like full discretion. I feel like in theory, our band, if I really wanted to, I can be like, let's hit up another record label and see if they can release our shit. For sure. Yeah. You know yeah I mean? You'd be totally right. In um, and sometimes it feels like that. And sometimes yeah. it's like, man, it's the, the work versus like how much I'm spending towards the label, towards the band that's very very fragile mm-hmm. uh, people hit me up all the time i I, th- I was filming something i was filming that riff video yeah that we posted recently yeah. <clears throat> i came i came back to my my facebook and it was like 16 unread messages it's just all just people and it's just like very stressful to like know that people are trying to <laughs> communicate with you that much and you yeah. can't get to them all i just can't get to them all yeah mm-hmm. you know and uh it's uh it's stressful. beginning yeah it's, it's stressful yeah. so we'll leave it at that but yeah, yeah. i mean uh, it is really cool though that you're you're pursuing something you're really passionate about and like yeah obviously financially it's it's just paying itself off right now but i think right it, it will eventually pay off in in dividends because like if you're passionate about something and you work really hard at it consistently most of the time it ends up working out. And I think, especially in the metal scene, record vinyl collection is is pretty popular. And especially, right. like, unique and limited stuff. And and yeah. you guys, again, like... And I'm really passionate about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, I really it's, love that part. <laughs> yeah. Like, every time you I know. see a, a really cool-looking vinyl, I'm like, oh, I bet that's an Artisan Era release. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, you guys are totally at the forefront of that. And that's something... Yeah really popular and and really unique and i think that that obviously well, like that's, that's obviously sure. going to do well for you guys yeah yeah i i think um anybody that's that's watching that has a band or that is a musician that's looking to you know further their career or looking to know how to get into the industry and stuff like that it's like it's so much work and the way that you've done the yeah. way that you've gone about it is like it's like almost you went through the back door and you're like, Oh, right. I'll just start my own fucking label. Like yeah. no one does that. I mean, not no yeah, one, but most stupid. 
Yeah, it's most. Not smart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But especially because yeah, it's sort of like um, like how car companies it's just been the same right. car companies for so fucking long yeah yeah and then, and then eventually Elon Tesla Musk comes, comes up yeah, yeah and then he comes in and it's like what the fuck you can't do this like you can't change the car game like it's been right. the same way for so long and mm-hmm. yeah like record labels i feel are sort of similar in that way like no, there's 100% so many they are. fucking record labels that have just been yeah. around seemingly forever doing the same thing doing yeah, the same just, technique the yeah. same a way you things know. are done and they just continue doing it that yeah. way because it's like proved to be effective and even like the movie industry is like that a lot like Absolutely. Hollywood movies just 100%. have like an algorithm of like this will make us the most money yeah. so we'll p- keep pushing out movies like with that's the exact why movies same suck format. now yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why movies suck and then Often that's when it, yeah. like a an interesting uh, independent director comes out and releases something, right. it's always like a breath of fresh air because they, they weren't fucking bound or by these bad. like stupid <laughs> rules that Hollywood has imposed. Uh, but or, I mean like, like yeah. you know, like The Lighthouse yeah, or like Parasite so. or yeah. a Platform. I haven't seen either of those either. movies, but I I want to watch those movies. They're I've heard really so many good. good things about those movies and I they're, really want to watch both of those yeah. movies in particular. Yeah, they're my favorite movies of, t- of 2019. Yeah, Lighthouse was sick. No shit, yeah. the, yeah? yeah? Yeah, really cool, really cool. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Um, yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I guess we could probably uh, wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, who, do, you have any, do you have any? Do you have any anything to anything to plug or, or anything that you want to oh. like advertise? <laughs> wow, that's not this my is, first time this, doing a podcast. This is a real podcast. <laughs> yeah, I got some shit <laughs> to plug. Your plugs. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'll, I'll put wash I'll put your all, fucking hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Stay home, wash your hands. Yeah. I'll put all the links in the description, but just like let me know what, uh, let, um, let people know what you want, uh, what you want them to check out. Uh, 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 can I plug uh, some of our new releases on the label? Yeah, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Uh, all right. So uh, we have uh, Symbolic coming out uh, April tenth, and Mythify coming out April tenth, and they're both completely different genres of metal. Oh. Um, and I think people. Well, at least like one of them if, if they click on it. Right. So, uh, you know. For for fans of. That's what's happening. For fans of what For fans of. Uh, Symbolic is for fans of Inferior, if you like my band. Right. If you like Dean's band, uh-huh. uh, you'll like Symbolica. Uh, Alan from, uh, he was in Alter Beast. That's his okay. band. Oh, yeah. He's fucking Shred Lord. Right. Uh, and then uh, Myth of I is like more progressive side, like instrumental. So if you like uh, like the periphery stuff or you know animals as leaders, then that's your that's your gig because they're cool. doing some stuff that's really cool. So sweet, sweet. yeah. All right, yeah. We'll put a nice. we'll put a link to the artist and era website and stuff like that in the description. Cool. Um, thanks, dude. Yeah, no problem. Uh, well, thanks for hanging out and uh, yeah, yeah I guess uh, it's been fun. Yeah, yeah, it was sure. a good time. I guess we'll see you not very soon because <laughs> we're not going to be leaving our house and you aren't going to be leaving your house. So no. maybe someday we can get together and tour again. But until that day. I would love it. Until that yeah. day, I'll see you. Yeah, let me know if Dalia is doing a show in Vancouver. I I'll, I want to buy tickets. Oh, yeah? And, and come see that shit together with you guys. Yeah, Mal- Malcolm and I are really big fans. Actually, Claire is too, big fans of Chris Dalia. Not so. as big as you. You, like, I love him. I love him. And a lot of his shows. <laughs> I love him. Right. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Malcolm, love him. All right, cool, man. I'll see you again.